Welcome to Everglades Classroom. I'm Mary, and today I'm going to talk to you about the adaptations that our plants and animals have to live in our wetlands. As you can see, there's a lot of water here in the Everglades, so all our plants and animals have to have adaptations to deal with that. One of the things I want to talk about is our cypress tree here has snorkel roots. So really what it has is this is their roots and they come out of the water so that it can breathe. Our animals also have adaptations for living around water. So I'm gonna turn it over to Miss Ashley who brought animals from Treasure Coast Wildlife Center in order to talk about those adaptations. Thanks, Mary. Hey guys, I wanna introduce you to Lily here who is a peregrine falcon who's found in the Everglades. Now, Lily has a really cool adaptation for peregrine falcons. They are actually the fastest animal alive. They can be clocked at over 220 miles per hour because their prey item are birds, so they have to catch them in midair. Now, peregrine falcons used to be on the endangered species list, believe it or not, uh, because of DDT. <laughs> so what would happen is the DDT would be sprayed, the bugs would die, the songbirds would go and pick up and eat the dead bugs, and then Lily, who is going to eat all the other songbirds, uh, will also absorb that DDT, and when she goes to lay her eggs, uh, the shells would be too thin and she would crush them, which made the population decrease, unfortunately. Thankfully, DDT has been banned in the U.S., and the population has come back up enough that they are off the endangered species list, which is fantastic. Right, Lily? <laughs> Alrighty, for our next animal, we're going to have to move a bit, but I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty guys, welcome back. This is Artie, he's a great horned owl. Uh, great horned owls are typically gonna be found in the swamps and the hammock habitats of the uh, Everglades. And what they're typically going to be eating are rodents and skunks and maybe even opossums as well. But we gotta talk about some of their adaptations. In order to catch those prey items, they have these magnificent giant eyes here. And those eyes have night vision in order to see at night. Uh, now, they are also going to be stuck in place so he has to move his head everywhere to see everything. If we were to have eyes as big as owls, they're going to be basically the size of a tennis ball. Now he also has asymmetrical ears. You guys may think that these are his ears up here, but they're actually going to be used for camouflage. They're just feathers. His ears, one's going to be down, down below and the other one will be up above. So he can hear above him, in the middle, and down below him. It's gonna be preferred to catch those prey items. Now, one of his prey items that I told you guys about are rodents, and we may come across them every now and then in our own backyards. So what we usually do is we usually put out glue traps or maybe even uh, poisons, and that's not something we want to introduce into the habitat, because if we were to do so, and the rodent gets trapped on the glue trap, Artie might see a struggling rodent and he's gonna say, easy prey, and then he's stuck in the glue trap. Or if we were to use poisons, then Artie here would ingest the poisoned rat and then he would have the poisons himself and unfortunately then he would pass away. So in order to diminish the amount of rats we may come across, we can always just start planting our own native uh, garden or planting our own native plants. That way we can actually introduce more native animals like Artie to take care of those rodents. Right, kid? All right, guys, for the next animal, we're gonna move a bit, so I'll see you guys in five seconds. Hey 
Okay guys, we're here with our next animal, which is a black vulture. Uh, so they are going to be the decomposers that we had come across in nature. They are nature's garbage men because they are eating all the carrion that we'd find out in the wild or even the uh, carrion, which is the damn animals that we'd find along the road. So they are cleaning up the bacteria, the bad bacteria and the diseases uh, instead of just letting it be released into the environment. So they are nature's garbage men. So they have a couple of unique adaptations. If you were to look at her head, she is bald and that's mainly because there's uh, that part of the head is going to go into the carrion, into the body and there's no way to clean that head. So they have developed no feathers on their head. And then when you were just watching was her sunbathing. So they usually will do that for fun, but after eating, it's pretty common to see them do because if there's any meat that may have gotten onto their feathers, they're gonna let the sun bake the, uh, the meat off and then they'll pick them off later. And if we were to take a look at her feet, I know, big yawn. If we were to take a look at her feet, they are white. And that is because vultures actually release their fecal matter onto their feet instead of shooting it out like other birds. Uh, this is because their uh, fecal matter is acidic and it kills any of the bad bacteria or diseases that may have hopped onto their legs. Right? Stevie is really showing off here. She's a beautiful bird. But we're going to go to our next animal. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, welcome back to the marsh. I have our last animal here, which is going to be the American alligator, Miss Irma. So Miss Irma and other American alligators are going to be found mainly in the marsh habitats of the Everglades and they're going to be feasting upon uh, some fish and even when they're bigger, maybe bigger prey items like white-tailed deer. Now, they actually have a very interesting symbiotic relationship with the other creatures of the marsh where these guys will build gator holes and the gator holes, once it becomes dry season, get filled with water, which creates a habitat for the fish species that are found in the marsh. Without the gator holes, unfortunately, we would see a lot less of the species that we'd find out here in the marsh. Now, as tempting as it may seem while we're out there hiking around, to feed wildlife, we really don't want to feed them in any way because that would make them ill. So if we were to feed an alligator, unfortunately, our food is not great for their digestive systems and can create tons of digestive problems and we don't want to make them ill. The animals you guys got to see today all came from Treasure Coast Wildlife Center where they all either had an illness or they were injured or orphaned in some sort of way. So the animals that you guys that got to see were rehabbed and brought back to good health but unfortunately were deemed non-releasable because of too many health issues or were partial amputations like Mr. Artie. Now, we want to really make sure that the animals stay nice and healthy, so we don't want to put any poisons like rat poisons and we don't want to feed wildlife. And we're going to turn this back to Miss Mary, okay guys? I'll see you next time. Thanks, Ashley. Now that you've seen our Everglades animals and learned a little bit more about their adaptations for living around water, create your own Everglades animal and share it with us. Thanks for exploring the Everglades with us. See you next time.